I was born September 30th, 1975 uh, in uh, West Baltimore. I uh, grew up in the 1980s and the early 90s uh, in, a, in a very, very violent time. And I love journalism um, because, you know, it, it gives you a license to answer, you know, all the questions that you have, you know, in the back of your mind. What people perceive you as is, is, is an expert, but in fact, what you are, if you're doing journalism right, is you're an actual student. When you write about the, uh, the impact of, of white supremacy in this country, uh, there, there's a great deal of energy spent on making sure that people who are different than you understand what you're saying. And I actually think that that actually corrupts language because you end up softening things. So you actually end up insulting people's intelligence. I'm really not thinking about how to get the average white reader to see my perspective. Uh, I'm trying to communicate as directly and forcefully and honestly as possible. All of these, you know, cases where, where we've seen, you know, this, this Black Lives Matter uh, movement come up, there's been a great deal of focus on what, what's being called police reform. My argument is, in fact, uh, we have a, a much, much deeper problem, and that is that we are asking the police to do certain things that maybe they, they shouldn't do. Take, uh, you know, that, that horrible video you see where Walter Scott is uh, shot in the back by an officer. Well, then one of the reasons why Walter Scott was running was because he'd been brought up before on child support cases. But what should we actually be doing about this problem with child support? Is jail actually the answer? Should we actually be jailing people for this? Freddie Gray is, a, is, a, is another case. There you have a situation where, you know, a gentleman is in an area that we've designated as high crime. He makes the mistake of making eye contact with the police officer, and then he runs. The reason why Freddie Gray was arrested was because we had made a decision and we're going to pursue our drug policy in a certain way in that area. Why did we have police there in the first place? Why did we have a situation in which we decide that police will be able to arrest people effectively or stop and search somebody effectively because they, you know, look suspicious? Mental health, you know, mental health is probably, you know, the biggest one. Uh, we have a situation in which uh, if you, you know, have any sort of mental health issue in this country and you have an interaction with a police officer, you know, you, you might well end up dead. Police officers walk around with guns. You know, do we want our mental health workers walking around with guns? There are other ways that we could think about doing this, but we decided not to. The expectation that, you know, catching things on tape is going to save us is, you know, um, I would say deeply flawed. Even sometimes when things are caught on tape, like, you know, Eric Garner's, you know, killing here in New York, that doesn't necessarily mean that anything is going to happen. You really can't be an African American in this country and uh, see, say, a Walter Scott video and be completely amazed. You, you, don't, you just don't have the luxury of, of living that way. You know, you've had interactions with police. You know people who bad things have, have, have happened to um, just for being who they are. My name is Tanahasi Coates. This is my brief but spectacular take on the legacy of white supremacy and its continuing function in our society today.